This is Keith. Hope you guys had a good Labor Day weekend. I know we did. Uh, we didn't make it to the lake. Uh, but that's alright. I've got some footage, uh, actually an interview that Emily did uh, that I'll play for you. Uh, and some old footage of my old boat. A couple of pictures. Short little video. Um, so, enjoy those. Just drinking a, a homebrew, a yingling clone. I hope to have some homebrew videos coming up in the future. Um, so if that tickles your fancy, stay tuned. Uh, if you have any other uh, suggestions, leave them in the comments. That'd be awesome. Um, I've had a couple of questions about uh, what is it to su subscribe to a YouTube video. Um, basically, the nuts and bolts of it is it doesn't cost you anything. Your information is not sold. If you have a Gmail account or a YouTube account, when you subscribe to my channel or anybody's channel it just adds it basically like a favorites so then you can go to your subscriptions and it pulls up all your subscriptions that's it very simple if you hit the notification the little bell then you'll get a notification when the new video is is posted um, and I think I'm not 100% sure how that comes be it email um, I know every once in a while there's a few people that I subscribe to that I'll get a pop-up on my phone it doesn't make a sound um, I can change that setting, uh, but anytime they post a new video, I can get a notification, and I, I can kind of stay up to date that way. So uh, it helps me out a little bit if you subscribe. Uh, if and when I ever get to the point of having a ton of subscribers and hopefully, you know, cruising the, the world on a sailboat someday, um, after you get beyond a thousand subscribers, which I am miles from, uh, then YouTube will start to give you a little bit of money not much it's probably just beer money um, I think it's an order of like a half a cent per view the more people you have as subscribers the more money you can make um, and, and again it's not a lot of money but like I said you know my beer money always comes in handy so hit the subscribe button um, hit the bell if you want to be notified when I post a new video I'm trying to put out a new video every week uh, or every time we go sailing and then maybe this winter, uh, once I bring the boat home, I'll have some like how-to videos. Uh, I've got a few few projects in mind for the boat over the over the winter, so uh, I'll try to film those. Um, and again, if you want to see anything else weird, just leave in the comments. So enjoy the uh, enjoy the weird interview and uh, some old footage and pictures of the old McGregor 26. Cheers. All right, it is Sunday, August 16th, and we are back at Acton Lake again because that is where our boat is docked and it is paid through the end of September. So that is where it will stay and where we will record from for the next month or so. So today I get to interview the captain, AKA Keith. I'm more like the skipper. <laughs> I mean, it's small, so. Anyhow, what boat number is this that you have owned in your adult life? Holy cow. Hmm. One, two, three, probably four. What type of boats have you owned? I had a, a little John boat that I never took out. I put a new floor in it, never ever took it out. Did you sell it? Uh, I don't know if I sold it or gave it away. I think I gave it to Matt. Hmm. Um, then we had the uh, pontoon. We used to St. Mary's for a few years. Sold that. Then I had the, um, the McGregor 26. Had that for a few years. Sold that. Now we've got the Hunter 22. 23. 123. <laughs> so, uh, but this is a lot better because this is the first boat. We did have the pontoon on the uh, water on dock for a while. Um, I don't know. I think it was a time and money thing, and there were some other issues, but it got used for a couple of years. But this one staying on a dock, much better. And how far away do you live from the nearest body of water? About 100 feet. <laughs> I got the perfect fishing pond in my backyard. 
I mean, one you can sail on. Uh, probably this one, and there's probably about three others that are equidistant. So, about an hour drive. So, what makes you think you'll sail this boat more? <laughs> this is not an interview. This is an interrogation. You no, lie. No, no, no. I have other questions, too. I'm just <laughs> starting with these. These are the easy ones. Did you put thought into these questions? I you mean... Like thought your way through a bunch of them to ask? I thought my way through it when I was getting ready this morning. Okay. What makes me think I'll sail this more? Um... Probably the fact that it's on, on a dock already ready to go it takes us less than an hour to get here less than 10 minutes to get out on the water um, and then we're at a better place in our life where we've got the time and resources to dedicate to just on a whim taking off not playing in a band helps um, I think I had the the uh, McGregor when we were when I was playing in a band I don't remember. So that chewed up a lot of weekends. Even if we'd only play on a Friday or a Saturday night, I'd be too spent to do anything the day before or day after anyway. So um, That and uh, the dream of uh, sailing to the Caribbean and beyond has been rekindled. So just in case Candace watches this video, shout out to Candace W. How did you learn to sail? Um, well, I went to university <laughs> as a youngster. Lies. YouTube University. <laughs> Lots of, well, actually, no, probably not as much YouTube because YouTube probably wasn't as prevalent when I had the McGregor. So it was probably a lot more articles and books. There's one book I remember, the yellow one. The Sailing for Dummies? Mm-hmm. I still have that book. Do you? It's in my work truck. That's <laughs> 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 what I do when I'm on break. No, it, I, it's a good reference book, but it's not as much about sailing. But, you know, when you've got the entire world at your fingertips on your phone, you can learn just about anything in a few minutes. So what do you want this boat, I guess, to teach you? like for future boats or future trips because I know this isn't the intended boat to sail away at least <clears throat> your wife's not sailing away on it no this was a stopgap because <clears throat> the price was right and it was easier to sell Emily since she had, was adamant that I not buy another boat while we lived in Ohio while we lived in Ohio um, I had been lowballing sailboat ads on Facebook for a while <laughs> And uh, this one just happened to make it through. And it was inexpensive enough that it wasn't, you know, no big deal. If I hated it and sold it for half what I paid for, it's not that big a deal. Not because I'm rich, just because I just didn't pay a whole lot for it. Well, and it's the year of coronavirus, so no vacations, nothing's open, nothing to do. Right, and I already built the deck, so... <laughs> this is a nice way to social distance and as you can see we are definitely social distancing that and it's a peaceful escape from the new normal dare I say it and like uh, Tim from Lady K said it's an election year so we can't watch TV <laughs> Watch lots Which of is hilarious videos. because he's Canadian. I know it, but you know, it seems like Canadians get it. They get more American content probably in their news than we get anybody else's content anywhere. To all the Canadians, I apologize. And I'm semi envious. But. Semi envious of what? Canadians. <laughs> no, I just, you know we've been under the we've been under the microscope for the last three and a half years and it's depressing it's nice to get out get out on the water where it's peaceful and quiet you forget about everything so what do you like about sailing i think one is the tranquility it's 
when I very first got the first boat, I think when we, you know, I put it in at Eastwood Lake, um, and just moving across the water, hearing the waves, but not hearing the roar of the motor. That was pretty, uh, that was a pretty amazing feeling. And it's more with a sailboat, I think, it's more about the journey than the destination. And that's, I don't know, something that I probably aspire to appreciate more and more. Um, you know, it doesn't come easy and it doesn't come all the time, but if you enjoy the journey, then it makes the trip a lot more worthwhile. That, and I'm too poor to afford a lot of gas in a big power boat. <laughs> So that's, I mean, that's what got me towards the sailboat in the first place. I thought, you know, I know people that have retired and bought these big giant boats and are touring the world. And I thought, man, I couldn't afford to fill the boat up one time, let alone buy the boat and survive. So that's what actually pointed me towards the sailboat in the first place. Anything and they're else? fast. You probably <laughs> see my hair blowing in the wind. We're going so fast. Oh, to be fair, I don't even think we're going half a knot. Um, the main sail is up, <laughs> but um, yeah, we're not moving very far. Yeah, so far this year, which we've been, we've been down here every weekend since I got the boat. Well, you have. This is only my weekend. second time. You've been here four times, I think. I think this is the fourth time. Yeah. And the winds have been a little anemic. But I've also looked at Windfinder because um, we've talked about going to a different lake maybe next year. Um, and I've looked at like Indian Lake and St. Mary's and this lake on Windfinder and they're actually all about similar wind speeds at any given time. But I almost wonder because this is kind of down in a bowl. You obviously can see from the surroundings that there's trees all around. So I, I don't know if that affects some of the breeze or not. I don't know leave a comment in the comments if you know about that but I feel like being in a little divot I feel like it would be like that way at Caesars Creek too since they're kind of down in a valley but I don't know never sailed on Caesars Creek it makes sense though sailed CJ Brown with the old boat oh my god and Eastwood that was hilarious CJ Brown, Brown was, nice. was fun I like that lake it actually the couple of times or a few times that I went out with you we definitely um, got some wind. I remember you trying to, what is it, kiss the water with your sail? What the heck were you trying to do? <laughs> no, I was just, we, I never even got close. We were probably at 45 degrees, but you know, you gotta like slowly push the boat to see, see its boundaries. During editing, I might add the video because it was me and two other girlfriends. You still have that video? Um, Candace sent it to me. Nice. We'll our, that in there. our first day, we'll so. Uh, bitch is about to be overboard. <laughs> <laughs> Come on up there. When he starts going in real far, it feels like you're going to roll over. <laughs> so fun. Definitely a lot of good wind to sail, and I don't know if that goes back to your theory of being down in a valley or a gully or being, because C.J. Brown was more open, I felt like. It was definitely open. This is, like, this lake's like long and skinny where cj brown was you know more circular yeah yeah we did lots of donuts in that lake <laughs> yes we did there's a term for that <laughs> i can't recall what it is but you know when you go getting too hard and then i don't even know what happened if i let go of the tiller or i pulled the main sheet i i don't know but we yeah we would do a donut no problem i got, I got pretty good at those <laughs> that's not a good thing <laughs> but it sure is fun it's fun it's a little scary but it's fun when you know you can swim to shore from any given direction it makes it not so scary i think especially when you're just starting to sail or just kind of learning the ropes so to speak they say it's hard to, to uh intentionally capsize a sailboat a monohull is that what this is yeah single hull as opposed to the catamaran or they make tri hauls or trimarans where they've got three pontoons essentially <clears throat> But I don't really want to try to capsize one. The older I get, the more upright I like to stay. Makes sense. But I'm not scared of it. Anything else you want? Here? So that was the interview. If you made it this far, thanks for watching. Uh, if there's any other questions you guys might have, uh, leave them in the comments. Hopefully we'll see you next week.